Okay, tonight I think I'm going to go into the wrestling industry for my, I guess, rant, blog, whatever you want to call it, Don. One, Ryback, they have turned him heel way too soon. And the big problem I have with the Ryback push is he's going to be demolished by Super Cena again because Super Cena is on his redemption phase. So everybody they put against Super Cena will be demolished. Ryback, the problem, the real issue with this entire writing of Ryback was he was starting to become over as a face and people were starting to gravitate towards him. I know the reason why they turned him heel is because you got, you know, Punk going out and you got other people might be going out too and they need solid heels. They missed the opportunity to turn Cena heel. I don't know why that company is scared to death to turn Cena heel, but that would be one of the biggest selling facets of WWE if they could just gravitate him towards being a bad evil man and have him be over the shield or whatever it is you know even tie it into this current story to where he's doing his redemption thing and there's injustice everybody mistreats him nobody likes Cena blah 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 turn him heel use him as the pinnacle heel of the company then you could have people like Ryback and everybody else try to take down this Rowdy Roddy Piper or the NWO Hulk Hogan out there. I don't understand the writers. Well, actually, I do understand the writers, and I'll explain the problem with the writing staff of the WWE right now. The problem with the WWE writing staff is very simple. They do not have the time to build good quality feuds. It's plain and simple. You have 12 different pay-per-views that you're trying to set up every single month. The pay-per-view system has killed the WWE. It's, I mean, the, the writing can nowhere be as good as it's ever been just because of the fact that you have to write a feud within two weeks. You've got another pay-per-view or four weeks. Let's so say you give them one solid month between pay-per-views. I know people's attention spans are the size of a gnat, but when you don't have time to build a proper feud, nobody's interested. Low buy rates. I, you know, it's like I remember used to be the big four, the WWE, the big four was always the Rumble, WrestleMania, SummerSlam, and Survivor Series. That was it. That was the big four. If they threw in an extra one or two every year, everybody picked those up. Now, everybody, you know, they had the money to do that with. But why are you going to pay $70, $80 for a glorified Raw? Why? You Plus, the next day, you know everything that happened on Raw or on the big pay-per-views anyway. And there's, you know, the post-WrestleMania crowd at Jersey was pretty awesome, but that wasn't the wrestling that was the fans. I, I don't understand why they think that now the fans are going to be like, oh, the fans are all rabid and crazy. The WWE. It's because they're getting bored and they're starting to realize that the only way they're going to have a good time is if they entertain themselves. That's a problem. I think one of the real big things that killed the wrestling industry up to this point, well, that, the reason that it's all PG, and I don't mind the PG, if it's done correctly. The old days in the 80s and the 90s, you would have feuds that lasted for months and months and months before it finally reached a conclusion. Sometimes you'd have people fighting for years before they came to a conclusion or before, you know, one guy turned one side and became partners, blah, blah, blah. You know, Hogan and Flair, Rock and McMahon. That was a long saga between them two. And then, of course, when he hugged him, that was the end of that, and it was just who cared at that point. But I think the problem with all these current wrestlers is either A, there's way too much talent that they're just not using, or 
the biggest trap that I have that the WWE does is they'll find a really good talent, they'll push them really fast, and then they'll put them back in a mid card. Totally kill them, whatever vibe that they could have created for them. Miz comes to mind right off the top of my head. He's a great worker. He's good on a microphone. He produces good heat. But they put him in, oh, he's he's the world champion. He's the, oh, my God, he's fantastic. Let's put him back in the mid card and have him chase after the U.S. title. Not make him a legitimate face of the company. Because, well, we got to reserve that for John Cena. Don't get me wrong. I like Cena. I like Cena. You know, he's he does what he's supposed to do. He does. He goes in. He does what they tell him to do. He's the face of the company. However, he's becoming a stale face of the company. Hurts the business. Hurts their hurts their image. He does a lot of great stuff outside the ring as far as helping people, as far as, you know, charities, charity work. You know, Make-A-Wish Foundation, he does really great with them guys. However, I don't think that he needs to be world champion anymore. I think they, if, if they want to give him a proper world champion run, they need to turn him heel and have him do a heel run. I mean, it might be a personal preference of his not to be a heel. Don't know. Some wrestlers don't want to be a heel. But most wrestlers that I've ever known, personally, they love doing the heel. They love being the bad guy. They can do things they normally could never do because they're a bad guy. And I think, you know, as far as Cena, if they could turn him heel, it would be it would be so great to hear the gasp of the audience going, oh, I can't believe he did such a thing. Which is, the IWC would be like, oh. Then again, two days later, the IWC would hate him anyway. That's the IWC. They're fickle people. I'm just saying matches aren't like they used to be. They used to be you would watch for months and months and months. You know, you would have like a couple pay-per-views where the bad guy would win it over. And then the the, the big pay-per-view, the, the good guy wins. And you're like, oh, all right, this is fantastic. You know, Undertaker Yokozuna comes to mind. Great long feud. Vince and, you know, Steve Austin. It was a common thing. And I think one of the bigger problems with the writers is they're creating people that nobody can relate to. You know, it's like Ryback. Really? I like watching him. I think he's a physical powerhouse monster. But he's not, you know, he's not one of those characters that are like, oh my God, that is the best thing since sliced bread. I have to watch him every week. I, I don't even care about watching it that much anymore. Once in a while, if I catch it, I'll catch it, but most of the time, it's nothing important. There's no real matches, no real characters that I really get behind, and I think they overuse the legends, but that's just my opinion, of course. Like, all this is my opinion. Um, you can obviously leave comments below, down, down there somewhere. Um, I'm sure most of you are going to be like, oh, you're an idiot. What the hell are you talking about? You're, you're a moron. You don't know anything about wrestling. And I probably don't. But I really think that the pay-per-view issue is, is Vince's big, biggest problem. They try to push a product 24 hours a day. You know, it's like WrestleMania. They said the biggest thing that pissed most people off WrestleMania was, oh, yeah, WWE app. Oh, you go to WWE. You can download our app and do all these amazing things. Oh, WWE app, WWE app. Oh, let's re, uh, recap. Uh, this one match, uh, Rock and Cena, Rock and Cena, Rock and Cena, Rock and Cena. So they totally glazed over a couple of really good matches that they could have had for advertising. I think everybody knows what the product is by now. Don't think you have to keep selling it. You know, let, just write good wrestling and let people enjoy the matches and enjoy the characters that you're creating. It's like Fandango. I think is a character that will die off in obscurity really, really quick. For the next couple months, he might be a hot thing, but WWE's writing history doesn't bode very well for him. He's a character, so within a couple months, he's going to be demoted down to like Saturday morning cartoons or whatever Saturday morning slam, whatever the show is now. I think Vince and the WWE needs new thinking. They need not necessarily a rebranding but a different way of doing business. I think 
the part of the problem of it is, is they've gotten in this PG era. And like I said, I don't have that much of a problem with the PG era. But their writing is so sporadic that you just cannot enjoy watching wrestling. It's like one week, you got a bad guy. Next week, he might be a good guy. Then he goes back to being a bad guy again. I don't understand it. Why they write it like that instead of having a character be completely consistent throughout their career. It's like Undertaker. Undertaker is a completely consistent character. Yeah, he might have changed his face a couple times or changed his, you know, dues and stuff, but he's still the Undertaker. He still has the same gimmicks. He still has the same things that he does. And that's why he works so well. It's like, that's, I think, part of the problem with them bringing back the legends is the legends are overshining the talent that they really have there. Dolph Ziggler, great worker in the ring. He's, he's, He's a, I like him. I think he's personally a great wrestler, but he's gonna, he's overshadowed by Brock, Triple H, Undertaker, The Rock, you know, and I, and I understand a lot of the guys in the back are beefed about it. And I understand, I'm, you know, I can see their perspective. You cannot shine when a brighter star is sitting beside of you or always being pushed in front of you. Or even then, you might be a bright star, but if there's even a dimmer star that's in front of you closer to the people that's seeing it, you're going to be drowned out by that dimmer light because it's closer to them. I think that, you know, WWE needs to start thinking that build long term. And I know Vince supposedly thinks ahead of himself years in advance, but that's also a problem. You don't know what's going to happen to the wrestlers. You don't know what the mood of the people is going to be a year from now. The fans have become very fickle, and they've become wishy-washy, which is fickle, I guess. But it's it's a shame because, you know, one character that they gravitate towards one week, they absolutely despise the next week. Listen to any audience when John Cena walks out into the arena. They're booing and they're cheering. There's two audiences cheering and booing right there at one time. And all the wrestlers are done like that. It's, it's, it, like I said, it's amazing that the, the writing staff don't sit down with the wrestlers saying, what do you want your character to be? Who do you want to be? Where do you want to be a year from now? We all can't be the champion. You need to understand it. Second level, mid card, low card is very important roles because it gets people involved. But, like I said, just my opinion. You can leave a comment down, down there. Don't care if you subscribe. If you do, thank you. If you don't, thanks for watching anyway. Until next time.